If you like the looks of this block gradient chart that I have below here that changes depending on what you have listed in this top left corner, hope I already did 75 plus 245. You can download this exact template at condensedmba.com forward slash gradient hyphen chart hyphen excel. Or if you want to learn how to build this from scratch so you can modify it to your own needs, I'll show you how to build this from scratch so you can deduce how to make it your own stylings. So let's go ahead and open a new uh, tab here and select any cell down near the bottom where you know you'll have enough space to make a grid of 100 blocks. And we're going to do this in percentages because that's how the first one is made, but you can do this with any just flat numbers, 1 to 100 if you'd like. You'll just have to change your formula, your conditional formulas accordingly. So we're going to go ahead and make this grid here really quickly. Going from 1% in the bottom left to 100% in the top right. And we're going to go ahead and give this a light gray background and a white border. You may have a newer version that looks slightly different, but you're going to do the same thing. Make sure you select color first before you do outline inside, or else it's going to default to the black uh, outline. So select color first, hit OK. And now we want the percentages to exist in their content in the cells, but not show visibly. So we're going to go back to format cells and go to number, custom, highlight general and hit semicolon, semicolon, semicolon. And basically what you're telling Excel is you want nothing shown for positive numbers, negative numbers, and for the value of zero. So it should eliminate everything here in these cells. Now let's make, eliminate the them from showing, but the content is still there. So let's make these a perfect square. Let's go to 25 pixels. 25 pixels so we have a perfect square here and for sake of formatting I like to put numbers in the top left for reference and if we want to keep the same color format where we have the bottom five cells are red if it's the correct number we're gonna select the sorry bottom 50 uh, select these 50 cells here go to conditional formatting new rule Use a formula to determine which cells to format and hit equals C8 less than or equal to A1 and lock A1 in place. And um, I don't know for whatever reason why I've been making this tutorial. I'm putting C8 because it's the top left cell in this range and it's going to automatically format the remainder of the highlighted area. And we're referring to A1 which will be locked as the reference. For whatever reason though, sometimes, and it might not here, but when I hit OK and OK, sometimes it will, for whatever reason, change this cell. So if the cells don't work properly, just go back and manage that rule to make it work properly. This, it looks like it is working properly, so we're good. But like I said, sometimes for whatever reason, it makes that C8 reference skip to like C11 or C10 arbitrarily. I have no idea why it does that, and it didn't do it here, so we're good. But just keep that in mind that you may have that issue as well. So now the next 30 cells we want yellow or orangish if the appropriate criteria meet or met. Here we go, new rule, same option. And we want C5 because it's the top left in that range. Less than or equal to A1 locked in place. And we want it to show yellow if that's the case. Hit OK, hit OK. And since we're at 50, nothing should show, which is correct. But let's say we go up to 75, nothing showing. So here might be an example of where the conditional formatting got messed up. We're going to manage rules, hit OK. Oops, sorry. Manage rules, edit rule. And it looks like it's still referencing it properly. But for whatever reason, 
this conditional formatting likes to act really funky. So let's just go redo this whole whole thing and hope that it actually cascades through this time. Okay, that might have been the issue there. I didn't hit apply. So once we hit apply, it looks like it's working properly. And it is. So in that instance, it was because I didn't hit apply. But like I said, you might run into these little glitches and you just got to go re back and redo it. It's not the end of the world. Just a little troubleshooting. So we want this to be C3 is less than or equal to A1 locked in place. We want these to be green. Hit OK. OK. Let's hit apply. So hopefully it works the first time here. We're going to hit 99 to check. We're going to hit 86 to check. And it looks like it's working properly here. So we have the identical chart to what we show here. I guess it's a little smaller, but it works exactly the same. Um, to modify this to your own needs, you're basically going to be doing all the modifications within the conditional formatting. So let's say you don't care about this ye uh, green, yellow, red pattern and you want just everything to be one color that shows. Um, you can do that by going into conditional formatting. Let's go ahead and just delete rule, delete rule, delete rule, apply. Let's say we want it just to be one clean color. We do a new rule, same thing, except this time from the beginning we're going to put C3, A1, locked in place, and let's say we want it to be blue, we're going to hit OK, and that way you have a singular color, and it's actually easier, you just condition format the whole thing, but you do it the same way as we did it with the individual orders. And the same thing you can do if you, instead of red, yellow, green, you want a dark blue down here and then a slightly lighter blue and then even a lighter blue up top or the other way around. You can do the same thing. You just have to select these certain ranges and do the same formatting we did with the red, green, and yellow. Uh, so hopefully this gives you a lot of options to make this look however you want it within your presentation. But I think it's a really cool graphic um, that you can add a little flair to your next presentation. So... I hope this helps. Thanks a lot for watching.